Hi everyone, welcome back to my 8 Enthusiast Extravaganza, where I celebrate having 8 subscribers and we look back at the first half of 2021 and see what kind of gaming I did. The um, last video, which I'll link below, I assume, I don't know, um, let's see, last video we did the introduction and we did what I purchased, all my purchases, acquisitions. This video, we're going to start with, I don't know what. This is not the correct script. Here it is. We're going to start with, I don't know, we'll look at games I didn't play. And, because it's much quicker to look at games I didn't play than ones I did. And, digital games. Hooray. Just FYI, this is a one-take wonder. I am a one-take wonder because I don't know how to do post-production work. I don't have any software. I wouldn't know what kind of software to get. And I have a 11, 12 year old laptop and that's all I've got to work with. So let's get started. That's enough. That's enough talking. Let's talk about games on my shelf of opportunity or shelf of shame or basically just unplayed games. Now, unplayed games, I'm only counting solo games. For example, I wouldn't count Downforce, which plays two or more players, two to six players. It's a super fun racing game where you race and you also bet on who you think you're going to win at various points around the game. Uh, and it's super fun, but it doesn't play solo, so I'm not counting it on my shelf of shame. Or like, for example, Article 27. Article 27 is an awesome game that I think needs a minimum of three or four players. Yeah, three to six players. It's super awesome. It's not on shelf of shame. I'm not going to be... I'm going to feel bad about not playing it. I'm just going to have hope for the future. At some point in the future, I will have three to six players with which to play Article 27. Now for the actual shelf of opportunity, my unplayed solo games, we're going alphabetically on this one, for most of the rest of the list we'll go by the number of plays, but since these are all zero, here we go alphabetically. First up is Dark Souls the whatever this is, oof, so heavy it shakes the camera. Dark Souls the board game, Dark Souls the board game, not a big fan of the IP. I've opened it, I've read the rules. I am not a big fan of the rules. They're a little intimidating. I don't mind admitting it. Um, but when the Kickstarter was going, I was a huge fan of it. I really got swept up in the Kickstarter. So I bought it, and here it is. And I still haven't played it. Maybe someday I will take my little guy and wander around the dungeons and grind monsters to try and get cool items and whatnot. But today is not that day. It's going to stay on my shelf of opportunity. I'm going to try to get to it. But Dark Souls board game remains unplayed. Uh, Firefly Adventures. I used to love the Firefly IP. Um, but I need a rubber band or something on my wrist every time I say um and flick it. So maybe I'll stop. So Firefly Adventures is like a heist game. It's kind of like a dungeon crawl, but it's a heist game. And you fulfill cool heist missions with your cool characters from a cool show. I do love the show. I used to love the show. But I read the rule book and it's tough for me. I'll try and get to it. It remains unplayed. I have the expansions around here somewhere. So I can be everybody. I can be Kaylee or Wash or Book or Simon or River. And I would love to play all those people. Jane. I'd love to play all those people, but the rules are a little much for me. Next up on the unplayed list, speaking of rules that are a little too much, Founders of Gloomhaven. Oh, it's shiny. Founders of Gloomhaven. Got caught up in another Kickstarter here and bought Founders of Gloomhaven. To be fair, I do love Gloomhaven. I love all nine races. I will talk to you endlessly about it. It's really fun. It's hard for me to play solo. Because you have to manage two characters, and that's kind of tough. Or even more characters. And that's kind of tough for me. It's very strategic in my brain. But this one is gives you these Tetris pieces. You get these Tetris-y looking pieces. Anyway, you're trying to build Gloomhaven up on this map with these little Tetris-y pieces. That represent buildings. And it's not super difficult. But it's enough of a challenge for my brain. And there's enough fiddly, fiddly rules and stuff. I love these meeples. Loving those meeples, though. Love them. It's a little fiddly and a little difficult. And so I have not a little intimidating. 
so I've not quite gotten to it yet. It remains on my unplayed solo list, shelf of opportunity, but I might. I hope. I hope someday. Where are we at? Keyforge. Bought Keyforge during the pandemic lockdown, I believe, give or take, when all the companies, not all of them, but many companies, were putting out solo rules. We also got solo rules for Keyforge. And I was very excited, especially because the every deck is unique thing, where every deck is unique and has a cool name and such. So I bought one of these, plus it's solo, plus it's solo playable. So here's, whoa, what? Grell Dojo Eater. Here's Grell Dojo Eater, for, as a for example. And I could play that solo if I just get the print and play and print it, which would involve a printer. So as soon as I get a printer, I'll print the print and play and play it, but I haven't done that yet. It does look a little, the, the rules are not difficult, but it does seem extremely challenging. I don't know if I'm up to the challenge, we'll find out. My last unplayed game on the unplayed shelf of shame is Massive Darkness. Believe it or not, I did not get swept up in the Kickstarter for this one. I got swept up in the bought it at a convention. Bought it from a convention. I already have Dungeon Crawlers. I have Dungeon Crawlers I love. I love Mass Mora. I love Gloomhaven. I have Dungeon Crawlers I love. I'm not sure that I need to love and learn a new Dungeon Crawler. Because when I'm in the mood for a Dungeon Crawler, I just run usually to Mass Mora. Although, although I will say I play a lot of Jaws of the Lion. Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, a lot of that. That's, that's really my go-to Dungeon Crawler of choice. I don't know. I've tried... True story, back in the before times, maybe 2019, Christmas 2019, I tried to give this away as a gift to three different people, and they all already have a copy. So, could not get rid of it. It certainly, if I had a cull pile, which I may or may not, if I had a cull pile, this would definitely be on it. And that is Massive Darkness, another game I've never played. I have plenty of dungeon crawlers. Put on that page. That's not the correct page. That's not the correct page. That, here we go. Single plays only. Now, this is kind of like the Shelf of Shame. It's single plays only. Games I've only played one time, and I didn't, for some reason or another, it hasn't made it. Maybe I didn't care for it. Maybe, I don't know. But there's only three games on here. I've been doing a great job of getting games off my single play list. The single playlist, by the way, shout out to Hunter and Rebecca Thomason, Tomlinson, Thomason, the Family Showdown, shout out to them, who put the idea for a single play only list in my head, and I've played really a lot of my single play only games, I'm only down to three at this point, and when I started the exercise, I was at 14, so I've played a lot of my single play only games, and gone back into experienced games I haven't played a lot. The first game on it is Duelisaur Island. Duelisaur Island has great, has an interesting solo mode. Very good, very challenging. And I got it for a good price at Half Price Books. I saw Gloryhound Dr. Gloryhound play it. It seemed decently fun. So I took a shot at playing it myself. And it... Uh, I don't know if I don't like dinosaurs. I thought I liked dinosaurs. Maybe I don't like theme parks. Maybe I don't like games that feel a little bit too much like work. I don't know, but it didn't click with me, and so I never played it a second time. So it's on my shelf of opportunity, one play, single play only games. And I will play it a second time, probably, and then I'll probably never play it again unless suddenly I realize I like dinosaurs, which I do. Or I like theme, or I don't know. The Dinosaur Duelisaur Island game series kind of is pretty casual about people getting killed in their theme parks. And there's not really a lot of consequences and stuff. And that makes me sad. So maybe not. I see by the old clock on the wall that I'm running out of time. And I will not be getting to digital games this, this video. So that's awesome. Let's hurry and get through the last couple of these. Next game I only have one play of is Firefly the Game. It's an exciting 
open universe game where you can wander around and do whatever you want. You can fly around, you can run cargo, you can take refugees, you can transport passengers. But there's a pretty specific mission you have to do. It should be a good... It should be a good solo player game. It's been a while. I know I only played it once and it has been a while. It takes a long time to set up. It takes a long time to play. I'm not that into Firefly anymore. Here on the back of the box it says two hours. I don't know if you can read that. It says two hours to play. That is a lie. That's a lie. Uh, it's a good game. If you love Firefly, you love wandering around the universe doing whatever, it should be easy to recommend it. But I just haven't gotten back to a second play. It took a long time that first play. But I got Kaylee, I got Wash, and I walked around, flew around the universe doing whatever I wanted, and it was pretty fun. It's, it's okay. There's not a lot of ways to win. There's only one way to win. So that's, that's fine. And last but not least, as I start to run out of time, whee, Warhammer Quest. Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game. I saw it. Played a copy at the game store on game night. Back in the before times. And I saw it at Half Price Books. You can see the labels over here. I always leave labels on things. And it's pretty fun. Uh, I already have a Dungeon Crawler game. So I've only played it once. But it's pretty nice. It kind of begs for expansions. And doesn't have any... Because Fantasy Flight Game likes to just not make expansions for games that are cool out of room. Okay, that's it for The Shelf of Shame and The Shelf of Opportunity, and I'm out of time. So, I gotta run. I will see y'all next time for digital plays and video games. And knowing me, this will be the only thing I can fit on there. I'm not even gonna try to fit multiple things on here anymore. It's gonna be digital plays, it's gonna be video games. That's all I'm gonna even try to do next time. So... Because I really like to go on and on. Yep. So, um, that's all the time I've got. Next video, we'll start the digital plays. And that time, eh, we'll talk about it next time. Until then, thanks everyone.